now we're ready for the second of the three pieces on the second of the two DVDs in this set. Uh, this one is going to be The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. It's a classic rag. Uh, you've heard it uh, more times than you probably know. It was in the movie The Sting uh, in that Marvin Hamlish score that made ragtime popular very briefly there uh, a few decades ago. And it's, uh, it's just a classic... Uh, uh, piece, its simplicity and delicacy, it's wonderful. So let's try to play it. Uh, let's try to do it justice. Uh, it's Scott Joplin's Entertainer. Now to do this we need to go into uh, drop D tuning. So we're starting from the tuning we're in and I'm gonna take the sixth string, sixth string down one whole step until it's in a nice octave position relationship with the D string, the fourth string, which is the open D. Sometimes it's a little hard to hear the pitch of that string, and one way you can do it is by getting the harmonic up on the 12th fret. See, a little flat. There. My ear tells me that's it. It's in. And the rest of the strings are the same. We're playing with that drop D. Now, <coughs> uh, we'll start out, I'll play the, uh, the introduction and the A theme. This, by the way, is in... Uh, classic form. Uh, it's uh, introduction, then A, A, B, B, A. Uh, then there's a little, um, no, 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 it goes into C, C, C. Then there's a bridge and the D theme, which also repeats twice. Uh, the only difference from a classical ragtime piece is that the, uh, the uh, D theme reverts to the original key. So this is going to be in D, but the trio, or the C theme, will be in G, typically a quarter, uh, a, a perfect fourth higher. Uh, but it returns to the original key for the finale, for the D theme. So right now I'm going to play the, uh, the introduction, which has no relation to the rest of it. It's just uh, a single line melody that starts very high and works its way down. Uh, and then the A theme, and then we'll uh, look at that in more detail. got here. Uh, you notice that uh, the two repetitions, it starts on one register and then goes up an octave for certain parts. I've tried to create some variety, so this will be a sort of a long lesson because I'll have to teach each part of, uh, of, uh, of each theme, uh, both parts of the A theme. Uh, first thing I have to teach you is something that took me a long time to figure out. I had to make this bass run come down. Uh, it's the D, the C natural, the B, and the A, all on the fifth string. The reason they're on the fifth string, when I could have gotten this D on the open fourth string, but I need the fourth string for other notes, for melody notes, for this F sharp in the melody. So how are we going to get this? Notice that the, uh, the low D on the sixth string is the first bass note, and then it comes in up there again. Now, along with this C in the melody comes this 
uh, C sharp in the bass. And at this point, something tricky has to happen with the left hand. You were playing the F sharp with the third finger. And now it's got to shift to the pinky. The pinky picks up that F sharp so that the hand can move to the necessary position for the G. It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, so the whole thing, notice the pinky gets that uh, D on the fifth string, and the first finger gets the, the C natural on the fifth string. Now the pinky takes this melody E note so that the hand can move into the G position. And the phrase continues with a little set of parallel sixths in the melody. Except the basses are in there also. Play it very slowly and uh, languorously and get as much music out of it as you can. That same shift so that you can get the G chord. And now the F natural in the bass. It, a little confusing because we have the drop, uh, the tuning change, but this is an F. And this is a little piece of an E7 chord. Notice that to get the E in the bass now, you can't use the open string since we're in D tuning, so we need to be on the second fret there. Now get this, uh, this D with the pinky so that it can slide up into the next form of the D7 chord. And once you have that, um, two notes on the second and third string on the seventh fret and then the uh, sixth fret for the fourth string. And the G sharp with the thumb. Open E, open B, over to the A7 chord. And you know this little pattern with the, uh, um, on the fifth, fifth, fifth fret and the sixth fret there. Then the bass line comes up. Uh, the ear takes this in okay, I think, but uh, the bass comes up like this and then goes back down to the low D. Because this higher D following, you know, resolving from this uh, C sharp over here uh, comes in immediately thereafter. So, so C sharp, low D, high D. And again, that same fingering shift. That's all repetition. Now the last part of this line is... Starts on an ordinary uh, folk D chord. Those are the parallel sixths. Now I get these notes uh, by barring on the second fret so that my finger, my second finger is free for the C natural there. And then over to this interesting pattern, which is just uh, three notes on five, three, and one on the second fret. Now, this is an interesting principle that I discovered. I found it very, very hard to get everything into this line. What you want is the bass line going down. You want C, uh, D, C natural, B, B flat, A. You want all that. And you also want But to get all of those notes is very, very hard to do. And what you'll notice is I leave some of them out. There I have them because it's not too hard to do. You have the C natural and then you play on the fourth string and the second string. And the, uh, you, you use the open strings, the open third and first string. Now, 
the piano score has that F in there, but it's very hard to reach, so I leave it out. Do you hear how some of the bass notes, uh, some of the lower notes of, 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 of those parallel sixths are being omitted, but the ear puts them right back in, so the whole thing works very, ni very nicely. It works. Um, now, the second time around, uh, we go up an octave. Uh, it's very nice to vary the register to get some uh, some variation of the piece. So here are the parallel sixths. Woo, sometimes that pulls off of there. Uh, let's get it. I'll do it this way. This reaching the C up here is kind of hard, but I know if I can't find a better way to do it. that little uh, G chord in just two notes. And then the rest is the same, just as in the first time around. It's just... That's exactly the same, uh, but it has to, this time it has to move into this pattern with the F natural in the bass and over to the uh, E7 chord. But that slide the G sharp in the bass, open string, 7th fret, open string, to the A, and then this bass run coming up, but this time we're going into the upper register. Open D, that C in the bass on the 10th fret, and back to this uh, D chord. And the rest, the, the line ends exactly the same way it did in the first take of the uh, the first piece of the of the A theme. So that completes the A theme. I'll do the lead in to the B theme when we get to the B theme. Uh, so let's do all of this now: the introduction and the two parts of the A theme in split screen, very very slow, as slow as I can make it go.